blessings upon you. Maybe some curses too. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the Hemlock Vale Mystic cards today. Uh, I'm Brandon. I'm Kyle. I'm Steven. And this is Optimal Play. Uh, you are joining our fifth and final video in this series as we give our first impressions um, of the player cards in the Hemlock Vale expansion to Arkham Horror the Card Game. Mostly sight unseen, unless any of them were officially previewed or something, we may have seen those. Uh, we uh, have been recording these all in one day, <laughs> so <laughs> we're starting to get a little loopy and maybe a little tipsy, but cheers. 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 Yeah, I'll do all the way. Uh, all the way for the last video. All we do, gotta do is get through these cards, then you two can go home. <laughs> You've been holding me here for days. <laughs> Uh, if you would hit the like button on the video, that helps us out a lot, and I'm just gonna assume you've subscribed to the channel if you're watching our fifth video in this five-part series. So, thank you for subscribing! <laughs> Kyle, this is it. The home stretch. One more investigator for you to tell us about. Let's do it. Okay, so our final investigator is the mystic investigator from this set, uh, Kohaku Narukami, the folklorist. He has uh, four willpower, four intellect, three combat, and one agility. Pretty decent stats. Other than the four willpower thing. Trash. <laughs> yeah, for a mystic, that's very <laughs> bad. Uh, Scholar, blessed and cursed traded. Mm -hmm. His reaction ability is at the start of your turn, either add one blessing token or one curse token to the bag, whichever there are fewer of. In case of a tie, you choose. Or... Remove two blessings and two curse tokens from the bag to take an additional action this turn. So that wasn't forced. Was not forced. Oh, I actually would have thought it would be so that you have to add curses if there's too many blesses. Just I go down. Hmm. Okay. No, I mean it, it makes sense because in order to take the additional actions, you have to remove two of each. Did you tell us about that part yet? Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 it was the second half of the ability where it says, or remove two blessings oh. and two curse tokens from the cast bag to take an additional action. That's what turn. I've seen Kohaku before, but I didn't remember it as being all part of one ability. I thought that it would be separate ability, remove those from the bag to take an action. But it's actually... You either add one one or one. So you're removing two and two and foregoing adding one. So it right. actually yeah. costs five tokens for the extra action. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, the Elder Sign ability is plus two, add one blessing and one curse token to the cast bag. And flavor text, why not greet the unknown with wonder rather than fear? Hmm. That's very nice. It is. Yeah. Six health. I hope that works out for him. <laughs> <laughs> Six health and eight sanity. Okay. Deck building, uh, 30 deck size. Blessed cards, zero to five. Cursed cards, zero to five. Occult cards, level zero. Mystic cards level 0 to 3, mm. and any neutrals. Deck building, it looks like just the classic signature weakness and one basic random. Um, everyone in Arkham Historical Society recognized Kohaku's booming laughter <laughs> and the haunting tales he tells both the yokai from his childhood home outside of Tokyo and the strange creatures that haunt the Arkham Woods. The eccentric folklorist tells everyone that the chronicling and publication of these phenomena's existence will be his greatest work. It, it, it is only when he is home with his partner, Gabriel... Gabriel? Yeah, Gabriel. That he, I was like, Gabriel or... Ga <laughs> no. Gabriel that he hears the cry of the same spirit who haunted his father and fears that his greatest work will never allow him a night's sleep. I'm, like, oh. surprised that this random 20s Japanese person has, like, a lover named Gabriel. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> they met him here, clearly. <laughs> Two LGBT characters in this box. Uh, who is the second? Alessandra. Oh, yeah. yeah. She loves the names. She does love them names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she sometimes pickpockets those names she loves, she but does. she does love them. <laughs> All right, uh, why don't we talk about uh, Kohaku's signature? Yeah. The Book of Living Myths, Chronicles of Wonder. It is a two-cost asset with a wild intellect and uh, willpower. I don't know why I said it in that order. That's not what's printed. Uh, item, tome, blessed, and curse traded. Kohaku only as a reaction when a chaos token would be revealed at your location exhaust book of living myths search the chaos bag for a bless or curse token whichever there are more of 
in case of a tie you choose and resolve it instead. Whoa. Damn. That's a hand slot to, to be to mention. When, oh. when a chaos token was revealed, ignore that effect. Dig in for the most popular token. Bless well, not first. ignore that effect. You you don't draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ignore that for a yeah. moment. Yeah. Pick up either a bless or a curse, whichever they're more of, or yeah. an attire you choose, and resolve that instead. Which then means you'll then then draw another draw token. Another token. So, so it doesn't get you out of a random, you know, the chaos. Well, it but, does but it, if you have the Survivor and Mystic Covenant sometimes just end drawing. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Uh, yeah. Um, wow. Man, so this also works on auto fails, huh? It has never been easier to cancel auto fails. Well, no, no, no. Well, no. It's, it's when you would draw a token instead, dig yeah. into the back. Oh, I see. So you're not seeing, you're not uh, seeing, you're not seeing a token again. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, I got you. No, yeah. that would be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and that's a hand slot. That's a little rough. But maybe not as rough for a mystic. It yeah. seems, yeah, it seems very, very good for him. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I, yeah, it's great. I love it. All right, give us the weakness, too, then we'll... Uh, Weeping Yuri, that. weakness, monster, geist traded, aloof, elusive, and hunter. This thing is hard to kill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it is just two fight, two health, and two agility, hunt, so... Hunter and elusive, so it hunts you, then when you attack it, it runs away. Yeah. And so on. <laughs> it, it, it hunts into you, attacks you, and runs away all in one. Oh, because it all elusive. Also, they run when you, they attack you. Yeah. Oh, weird. So it yeah. just like sits back. So it, it it's not oh. engaged. It hunts in, attacks you, and, and moves away, still unengaged. And for two or each time, that's that's rough. Whew. Yeah. That is that is a that is a punishing monster. So is that force ability? I see they're good to make up for all this. I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after an investigator reveals a blessed token or a cursed token during a skill test at Weeping Yuri's location. If it is ready, Weeping Yuri attacks that investigator. Limit once per test. Oh. And, and, and mind you, uh, when a monster is forced to attack, not through provoking, this would exhaust him. Jeez. But it would also elusive away, right? So it would still move away, but it would be exhausted, oh. meaning in the enemy phase it wouldn't hunt in and attack again. Yeah, but that's oh. like so annoying because you're trying to kill it. Yeah. I guess can you still? it'll move away, but if you're successful, you'll still hit it? If it is ready... It attacks that investigator. No, because... No? Because it's after you reveal a token, it's not during the step that would be dealing damage from attacking it But I feel like if you're in a test against an enemy, even if they're in a different location, you still damage them if the test is successful. <sighs> yeah? I, I'm... I'm it, that yeah. makes sense. You're in the midst of a test resolving against that enemy. I don't know if location has any bearing at that point. Because you've initiated the test successfully, because hmm. you've engaged an aloof enemy and it started to attack him, I think you're probably right, but I'm not positive to be honest. This is a, like Wilson, by comparison, just had like his tools are blanked until he spends two actions. <laughs> this is so much worse. This is so much more punishing. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. The one, the one good thing is obviously when it when it spawns, it spawns at your location, not right. engaged, but it's at your location. It's not like it's spawning far away like um, Alessandro's mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, huh, Kahaku's weird. It actually kind of seems to me like there are two, without having seen any of the Mystic cards yet, all, two paths to take him. You can either play with a bunch of Curse Bless stuff and then get a lot of bonus actions with his ability, or you can play with a bunch of Curse Bless payoff cards, should there be any in this set, we've seen very few, <laughs> but, uh, and use his ability to add more, to trigger them more often. Yeah, because I don't, I don't think if you're what you do. if you're playing a bunch of payoff cards, then his ability to get an extra action is anti synergistic with those. You're draining the bag of the things that cause those payoffs. Yeah, huh? Feels bad. I feel like you don't just, like him. Uh, no, 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 I think I think the strategy with him is just dump as many as you can of both and just take some actions, take some payoffs, take you know, yeah, crazy shit. I feel like I, this is... Well, no. See, I don't think that's it. I think some actions, some payoff cards, like, no, I think you I think you choose one or the other because otherwise you're just putting... Well, I mean, I think... Otherwise what, half your deck does not synergize with the other half or half of what your shtick does not synergize with the other half. I, uh, I don't know if I completely agree with that because I think it's like... It, let's say that you are relying on, like, temp fate, keep fate, cards like that mm -hmm. to add tokens. His first part of his ability is like a nice backup like if you don't draw those early you still have some way to generate tokens and power your card so i think it like helps shore up the weaknesses and then yeah. it also gives you an upside of like a bunch of actions when everything comes together yeah and i think as you creep towards like 
eight to ten tokens in the bag of each, then that's when you start paying it off to like reduce the chances that you're just drawing through all those tokens in, in an action. I don't know. Maybe. We'll have to play yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and maybe look at some of the cards. Yeah. Uh, but also, the, the first one I have to say out loud is the, the Mystic Covenant now has a really great uh, home. Uh, oh, of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, why am I blanking on the, not, not hypocritical? Uh, uh, paradox. Paradoxical. paradoxical. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although, he can yeah. take all five covenants, right? So, like, yes, that's there true. is some opportunity cost to, like, there's that four is... other great covenants he mm. could be taking. That's true. The Ancient Covenant yeah. is always one of my favorites. And he, so he can only have one because the covenants say max one, right? Yeah. Just most investigators can't access all five. <laughs> yeah. So this doesn't come up. Whoa. That's, that's a different... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not I'm not even sure. I like the Paradoxical Covenant and the... Um, I think the... The bonded card was the Twilight Diadem. I forget the name of the neutral level five we talked about last time, but that's another card that wants you to draw the pairs of Curse Bless. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, I wonder if there's turn any, anything else that can help us do that and, and lean into that. Um, let's find out. Let's do it. Uh, the first Mystic card, it's, uh, I, Steven, you're not holding a copy of it because uh, there's only one, it's a limit one per deck, but the Rod of Car Carnamagos, the Scepter of the Mad Seer. Uh, it's a two-cost mystic asset. It's an item, a relic, it's a cult, and cursed. Uh, takes up a hand slot, and as a fast ability, choose a non-elite enemy at any location and exhaust Rod of Karnamagos. Uh, reveal five random chaos tokens from the chaos bag. If a curse is revealed, search your bonded cards for a random rot event and add it to that enemy. And are you holding on? You're, you're the holder of the bonded cards? I sure am. You didn't okay. space my uh, talking in this video very much. <laughs> no, I guess uh, I guess that was not planned very well. Uh, but is so that a free it. trigger? Um, it is a free trigger. You exhaust it. Uh, but so every, every turn you can do this. Choose a non-elite enemy at any location and exhaust it to draw tokens out and see if you hit a curse. Um, so it's a that's interesting. You're using uh, your bonded cards and taking a random rot event. Uh, tell shall us about I, um, shall oh, I tell oh, you Can I pick a random one? <laughs> sure. All right. That is I a pretty good way to do it. <laughs> that one. All right. So the first one we're gonna look at is Scarlet Rot. Uh, the art is pretty much identical, except the source of rot changes color based on the color of the rot. Okay. Sure. In the art, in fact. <laughs> Um, so this one is uh, forced at the... Uh, so what happens to this? It gets attached to the enemy? It's attached to the enemy. Okay, so forced at the end of the round, attached enemy takes one damage. That seems good. Forced when attached enemy leaves play, set it aside out of play. Okay, so it's all upside. Yeah. Um, because it's so easy to do this, to, to just try every turn and attach it to any enemy anywhere, I was wondering if it would be if there would be uh, pros and cons to them. Any location. Wow. Yeah. Non-elite, but still. It seems Brandon, good. Brandon, let's pick another random one. All right, this one is the Abyssal Rot. Mm. It's purple rot on yep. them. Uh, when the attached enemy leaves play, set it aside out of play. But the actual ability is yeah. the attached enemy cannot attack. Ooh. Whoa. Is this a level zero? This is a level zero. This seems good. <laughs> I mean, it's a random one of these. So you don't get to decide whether the enemy can't attack or starts bleeding or whatever else. But... Uh, this is fun. I, I think this is cool. This is fun. Yeah, I'm having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, if those two were in play, you do narrow down which one you're going to get. True. You yeah. would know it's one of these three. Yeah. yeah. Like? Like the Amber Rot, <laughs> Brandon's favorite. Oh, it is. The... Are they are they allowed to do this now that they don't have the key forge <laughs> yeah. rights? Yeah. What? A... <laughs> Amber Rot, which mm -hmm. is uh, Brandon's favorite AE right next to each other. Um, forced, when attached, enemy is defeated, gain resources equal to printed health, maximum of five. Hmm. When the attached enemy leaves play, it gets set aside. So that goes up. to the holder of the rod, not the defeater of the enemy, I guess, right? Because they would control this rod card? Yeah, hmm. correct. Uh, give us this one. This one is putrescent rot. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, a little gray with, with red on the art. That's fun. Uh, attached enemy gets minus one fight and minus one evade. Forced when uh, it leaves play, this goes set aside. That one's the weakest so far, I think. Yeah, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. and, I picked that one. Okay, finally, <laughs> finally, uh, vi virescent rot. Virescent is virescent. how I would say that, but I don't actually know. <laughs> virescent rot is green with some purple. Um, attached enemy cannot move. 
Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty solid because you can just put it on it. I mean, it's not in anyone's location. Yeah, yeah it's and pretty it's good. Uh, it's pretty bad, though, if you're just putting it on an enemy, hoping for, like, the resources or something when you kill it. Right? Sure. Like, uh, situational. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this. This is super fun. This is so cool. And it's just a, it's a, I mean, it's a hand slot, which is not great, but it's a free action anytime there's enemies. Is there a limit to how many rots they can have? No. So you can just rot an enemy from yeah. its core. It's great. Yeah, and uh, and if you're filling the bag with a lot of curses, you are uh, you got a pretty good chance when you draw five tokens of hitting one. Uh, if you are going full Kohaku and also putting in blesses, those dilute the chance. Yeah. Right. Because uh, this this type of card doesn't draw through those blesses to find more tokens. I think this is a great great option for like a curse mystic suite. You know. Yeah. The, the suite of spells and Enzimuth. Love it. Love, love, love this. Yeah. I think this is, this is such a fun design. And so much fun. Such a fun, unique, new way to use the bonded card thing. Like Mystic's off yeah. to a great start so far. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I have goosebumps. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. So next we go to the cat mask. Mm. The capricious meddler. Which mm. is a great description of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one cost asset, will and fist, item charm and mask. Limit one mask, uses two offerings, replenish two of those offerings Ooh. after Doom is placed on a card with no Doom. Uh. Oh, so it's a harder thing to control unless you're playing a Doom Mystic, but, but who, who does that? Everyone. Uh, I love Doom Mystic. Yeah, you're wrong though. <laughs> Spend an offering, you get plus two will or plus two fight for this skill test. Nice. Yeah, wow. I, mean, I think like all the masks, I think it's very, very strong. Uh, you may, like depending on when you play it, you might, and, and depending on the scenario, you might just replenish it, like, once when the agenda turns over, like, uh, something like that, but, yeah, I mean, and, like, obviously you could put it into, um, oh, wow, Amina yeah. or someone who's actually putting Doom yeah, on their I mean, own Amina cards, is but... the first one I thought of, because she really needs the help with the stats. She needs help in a lot of ways. Sure. She's amazing. She's I a, love she's Amina. Not a, she's not she's a, one of my favorites. She's now. not a good card, though. She's amazing. You're like, wrong. People love Lola, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had successful Aminas. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> um, but the, the, this is the only mask that we've seen that does two offerings yeah. when it's hit. And yeah. you're right. It, it does naturally happen when the agenda gets its first two, which is very funny. Yeah, and I think that these masks, I've said uh, all along that uh, they're fine if you just get the two boosts and never replenish and they're great i think i've been saying if you do it about two more times this is just so if it's it's like once yeah. yeah and if you're in a scenario with cultists it's going to be constantly oh refreshing. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. yeah wow yeah it's a great card speak to the dead is a one cost mystic asset it's a talent and a ritual and takes up an arcane slot it uses six offerings and as an action you can spend any number of offerings to parlay Choose a spell or ritual event in your discard pile and reveal tokens from the chaos bag equal to the number of offerings spent. If at least one skull or curse token was revealed, return the chosen event to your hand. Hmm. I don't think I like it. I love it. Yeah? Because you gotta, you can, may, I think you gotta draw at least three tokens to feel good about your odds, even with a bag full of curses. And... Mm. So this is going to return two events to your hand across, you know, pl three actions to play it and use it twice. And... I feel like, but you got Olive, you got Jacqueline, you got Jim. There's a lot of ways to, like, juice the, juice the odds. I mean, I think, I think yeah. you, uh, you could potentially use this with, like, Favor of the Moon or something like that. Where sure. you reveal one and make sure it hits, like, uh, or the other one is... Oh, Kaku! Uh, <clears throat> signature. Do, um... Oh, that's Kaku's true. Signature. Do his signature. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, do, do Favor of the Sun and Moon work outside of skill tests? Uh, this is not a skill test. I yeah, I think it's when you would reveal a chaos token. Okay. I, I'm not positive, but I think that's what the trigger is. I think it is. Huh. And we were, um, and I get what it's going for, and I kind of I kind of like this. Uh, we were saying when we talked about so many parlay cards earlier that parlaying is always with another character, like an enemy or an NPC. Mm -hmm. This one's not. Uh, which I think the idea is the card's called Speak to the Dead. It's because you're parlaying with the, your, the dead your, with the your discard like, pile. <laughs> yeah, uh, which, which I think is cool. But yeah, so like this doesn't qualify for um, that one card, those card. other cards that like affect the enemy you're parlaying with. Yeah. yeah. The one downside is it only recurs events. So 
you know, you have to have enough spells. You have to yeah. build around this, then you have to get lucky with the, like, you have to build around this in several ways. You have to yeah. have events you want to recur, and you have to have a bag full of curses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's bad. I think it's, it's pretty situational. It's, it feels like the easy call is, um, Prescient, which is a skill card, uh, level zero, uh, that can recur spells of any kind from your discard pile. If you name the right token, similar yeah. feeling, but uh, it feels much less costly than this one. So yeah, you're just, you're just checking it into like... a willpower test and and hoping. The arcane slot, all the actions this takes. Yeah, uh, I, I think I, I think I think it, in a very specific build you can make this work, but I don't think this is a thing that unless you're ready to really make it work. You don't just, like, put this in your deck hoping that it, it hits sometimes. And I think in that deck you're describing, there are still probably better cards that could use that slot in the deck. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Uh, Wicked of Thame. Uh, or Second of Thame. Yeah. Yeah, so wait, was Wicked of Thame also the other one? Or I no, thought it was spirit. called Spirit. Yeah, Spirit, spirit of Thame. Okay. Or Athame. Or, I've never known how to say this This word. is a <laughs> Cursed Blade, two cost asset with a fist icon, item, weapon, melee, and cursed. As an action, add one to three cursed tokens to the Chaos Bag. Fight. You get plus two fight for this attack for each cursed token added as part of this action's cost. If this attack defeats an enemy, replenish one charge or offering on an asset you control. Oh, so there you, you go. How you your speak, speak to, to the dead, dead offerings <laughs> back yeah. one at a time. Does any other card like what else uses offerings? Uh, there's definitely uh, there have been some, and none of them come to mind. Yeah, yeah. I, feel I feel like, like the the weird the spirit. This the, sorry, the seeker survivor card that's like you plant a tree. Yeah, and you yeah. can like cancel get cards, cards back, cards by or that game. Yeah, I think. yeah. Um, most of the time you'd be using this for charges, which yeah, obviously yeah. Is, is what most yeah. spells use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is cool. Um, adding curses and getting plus two combat per curse means that you're very likely to get your combat high enough to, to hit just fine. So, then it'll deal one damage. Yeah, the one yeah. damage is one the big damage. issue. And the replenishing charge is only on defeat. Yeah. So this is maybe, this goes this along, along with your uh, fight spell, yeah, to finish yeah. off enemies. Yep. Yeah, I think I think it's good. I think it's a uh, better than I want to say it is right now. But I think you're right. It's like it's, it's shriveling on a three hit point enemy, followed up by this. Um, get some curses in the bag that you can yeah. use, and then yeah. Uh, and it's one hand, so your uh, rod of Karnama ghosts can go in your other hand. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This is this deck is really. Bad. I, I think I think you meant though you Armageddon with your first action. Yes. Right. Right. The, the curse. The yeah. Curse yeah. Because you're, you're need. So so far these and including the next card that I've already uh, flipped to in my hand, these have all been curse focused. Despite the investigator being seemingly curse bless focused. I don't know what the deal with yeah, that I mean, is. That second half will be bless focused. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we're still in the first half then because Antediluvian <laughs> Him is a two cost mystic event. Uh, it's an augury and a double. So it costs an additional action to play. Reveal the top five cards of the encounter deck. For each card revealed, you may add a curse token to the chaos bag to place that card on the bottom of the encounter deck. Return the rest to the top in any order. You know what? What I think sells this for me, actually, is the return the rest to the top in any order. So it's also yeah. letting you choose who draws what for but the next turn. I hate this, because it's two more actions than two first more watch. Actions, yeah. yeah. Like, two more actions. And two more resources, I think, first watch is? One. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So Two more, more actions and one more resource than first watch. It's not as good as first watch. No. I don't, I'm not. I'm not saying it is. But first watch is very good. And if another class that that's not usually their specialty as but much. First watch is level zero. It's... You could probably have like two or three people in your group that can play it. This is also level. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, if if it was a like a high XP guardian card, there would be mm -hmm. less people. There's a lot of people that can play first watch. Play this as a true solo mystic and you learn what your <laughs> next five encounter draws will be. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not bad. It's <laughs> not bad. Uh, what, what's her name? Takes this card every time. Uh, Gloria? Gloria. She still doesn't exist yet in the real world. She's only in book world. I have her. She's in my books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't have the signature cards at the back of her list. <laughs> I don't need them. <laughs> I have alternatives. <laughs> Man, if they ever print Gloria, 
I'm so fascinated because she has like three signature cards and three weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously so different from her current version, how that will play, just based on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm very curious. Yes. But Same anyway, uh, that's an aside. This is fun. I think it's less than great. You're entitled, me, you're entitled to your opinion. But tell me what the next card is. Drain Essence. Oh, this is funny, because Antediluvians are like a type of old vampire, and then this card is Drain Essence, which oh. is also like kind of a vampire thing. Um, this was one of our preview cards. This is the one that you... Oh, yeah. You previewed on your doorstep, this. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's say two-cost event, will and book, spell, so you can recur it with your favorite card. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, Speak to the dead and keep draining that essence. Uh, parlay. Choose an enemy at your location and test Will X, where X is the chosen enemy's fight value. If you succeed, move one damage from your investigator to the chosen enemy, up to two damage instead if the chosen enemy is not elite. Man, can Hank take this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, we can versatile for it. Alessandra. Uh, 40 card deck. Alessandra can take it. Um, and uh, she's Will got she? okay willpower, and her fine clothes make this very passable. And then she can also take, I don't think we said, but she can take Speak to the Dead and recur to this. <laughs> Why? I don't know. She can. Wait, how can she take? She, she, she can, can take, take parlay cards. cards. Oh, Wait. it is a parlay oh, card. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, no, I don't think any of that's worth doing, but you could. You definitely can. <laughs> I think this is fine, but there's fight spell events that are better. Several of them, I think. Yeah, the only thing is a lot of mystics do have low HP, so maybe yeah, moving nice two heal. damage off is good. That's true, it does heal. Yeah. Especially if your mystic has taken any tra physical trauma, you mm. know, then you can use it mm. anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think I like this. Yeah, I guess. I feel like I feel like it is Spectral Razor is, is not that much better than this card. Mm -hmm. um, it's one better in either, each side. I feel like I may have said this in the, in the surprise door, um, <laughs> but you're also healing. It feels, feels fun. Yeah. What if you don't have so. the damage to move? And you just this is dead in your hand? Yeah. Wow. Don't don't play this if you don't have damage, because it's right. not going to deal any. Yeah. That means you have not taken enough copies of uh, the permanent. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In the thick of it? Yeah. yeah. In the thick of it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. More copies of the one per deck card. <laughs> well, no, you take in the thick of it for the physical trauma, and then you take arcane research for the mental trauma. <laughs> and so you've got plenty of trauma. There yeah, to, to move around to enemies. All right, well, we had a brief break from the curses, and now we're back to Accursed, a uh, wild icon mystic skill. It's innate and cursed, and says when you commit Accursed to a test, add up three curses to the chaos bag. During the skill test, treat the modifier of curse tokens revealed as zero. Not all who wander are lost, but this card is lost to me. The name is Accursed, and you say Accursed and Curse in the description of the card, and I got lost for a minute, but I'm caught back up. So, okay. <laughs> it does two things. It's very important to note that you do not have to do both things. First, it helps you add Curse Tokens, if you want Curse Tokens. Second, it treats Curse Tokens as zero. Oh, so, so like, you don't have to add any Curse yeah. Tokens. You could just use this as a one wild and Curse Tokens don't hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very solid card. Yeah, that's person. okay. Yeah. I think it's good. Anything anything that quickly gets tokens into the bag for very little cost or actions, which is this, feels good. Yeah, you can only run so many skill cards, and it just does not, I think, in a curse deck replace Promise of Power. And so, and there's definitely other Mystic staple uh, skill cards, right? There must be. I can't think of uh, Notably, guts. <laughs> Notably, Silas can take this. Oh, good. And he can abuse the adding curses part because it's when it's committed. Oh, so he can add a lot of curses. He can add a lot of curses and then return to his hand and then I, add more curses. It seems great. I, I see this more as like you have like a really big reveal. Maybe you're using Olive, maybe you're using um, the statues. So you're, tr and then you're doing like an Armageddon test and you're like just trying to hit like four curses and curses still succeed. Can. Yeah. Like that's where it gets really cool. Yeah. No, I think this is fantastic in curse sweet mystic play because you're trying to find the curses to do all those special things. You don't want to fail still. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. Mesmeric influence is a one XP skill. Will and wild um, mm -hmm. practiced when this card is committed to a skill test. The performing investigator may ignore all keyword or location effects that would trigger during this test. The dreaming mm -hmm. mind is as deep as any sea. 
Does that include elusive then? Does that trigger during the test? We have so many questions about elusive. I, or is it after its attack? I, I, don't know. I bet yeah. it includes that. Elu elusive? How would elusive? Does this stop an elusive enemy from running away after you attack it? Is that part of its Oh. Uh, all yeah, keyword or location. It would types. definitely yeah. ignore yeah. alert and Yeah, so it would trigger during this test. So yeah, it would I don't it. know that elusive triggers during the test, though. I think it says like after it is attacked. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. It kind of feels like read the signs but, and a skill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The signs ignored haunted. Yeah. Yeah. Ignored location triggers and things like that. This is fine. Like, I think this is good in willpower tests. Pretty mediocre. Well, I mean, and having a wild icon, like, on, being able to put this into any kind of test and avoid, like, you, if you drew a treachery while you're in a location with a really terrible fail effect, right? Like, mm -hmm. just, just, it could certainly bail you out of a bad situation whether it's worth spending an experience on I don't yeah know. that it's like a little too good to be zero xp but it's also i don't really want to pay xp on it yeah i feel like it yeah it could have ignored the like one willpower icon just been a wild at zero and i would have taken it yeah. yeah maybe i still think that uh it's hard to justify a card slot for it but all keyword or location effects. Yeah, if there were like mystic cards with a new keyword that was negative or something, <laughs> and this would ignore that, I would yeah. kind of get it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's very niche. I don't think it's gonna get into any decks. <gasps> All the McBride. Did you know this was in here? No. This oh, this card was uh, a big controversy on the internet because uh. the content creator that. Um, previewed it annoyed the community with the way they previewed it i don't know um that's very funny. There was, they, they like kind of held it off and made a contest out of out of it uh and what i thought was a hilarious punchline to the whole thing about the community being so mad that like it was scheduled to reveal on this day and they didn't actually reveal it until two days later uh is that this is such a boring upgrade oh, no. <laughs> so all mcbride uh tried everything once <laughs> Um, two cost, level two mystic asset. She's an ally and a witch. Uh, takes up the ally slot. When you reveal a chaos token, exhaust all of, all of McBride. Reveal four chaos tokens instead of one. Choose two of those tokens to resolve and ignore the rest. Amazing. I believe the only difference is the numeral three became four. Yep, which right. is incredible. And... I didn't say it was bad. I just said it was boring. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, that doubles the number of tokens you ignore. Like, yeah. Think uh, yeah. about that. Doubles them. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny uh i do like the uh subtitle tried everything once i believe yes. the original one is tried everything twice uh i thought she it's like will try everything once oh and now it's tried everything once. Oh, i do think that changed. would try yeah. everything yeah would try anything once I think yeah you're right yeah you must invest yourself in every spell sometimes literally nice um i don't think that the way you put it uh, of saying it's like double as effective is accurate. I think it's pretty close. But, right? Because you also have to draw an extra token. So you're. You're he's just saying he's ignoring, you're ignoring twice as many tokens. It's, it's, you're choosing two out of four instead of three. So your, yeah. your choices are upped by one third. <laughs> yeah, but like in the old one, if you drew two really bad tokens, you were screwed. Yeah. And that's not true anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, you have to draw three really bad tokens. It, it's good still happen. It's good still happen. <laughs> yeah. But it's a huge improvement for only two yeah. XP. Yeah, I agree. I think this is great. Olive is, is still one of my top allies from Mystic, and now I'm excited. Yeah, I think it's fine. It's just, um, I think this is the first time that a card has ever had just a numeral in the text difference <laughs> from its lower version, and I'm just like, <laughs> we're talking about this set having a lot of upgrades. This is just the least exciting i she also has a willpower icon additionally i feel like there are so many more boring upgrades than this there's so many that are just like oh the cost is like one less this is like in a big change in, in the effect in the ability yeah i agree i think i think this is a this is i'm going to take this in my current campaign that messes with chaos manipulation Sure. I mean, if you have olive in your deck you were probably she's probably very built around i did so so you <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm going to upgrade into her. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. The the, the Chaos Dog Manipulation playstyle has, for whatever reason, never really been my playstyle. So I don't, know that if, I don't know if I've ever played all of them. I think you just don't like purple. Yeah. I think you... Do you not like Prince either? I love... Um, but, oh. 
Prince. I was like, what, what do you mean, Prince? Prince. <laughs> uh, I love like uh, the curse playstyle. Like I love like the curse suite stuff, even though it wasn't great. Like uh, I like purple, but yeah, I don't like Doom, and I don't really like chaos bag manipulation, and I don't really like canceling treacheries. I think that's yeah. boring. I think that's the least ex- the least fun way to deal with the thing the game the things the game throws at you is just cancel them. <laughs> so I think uh, Gloria yeah. Gloria is the most boring, very powerful investigator the game's ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you there. Um, yeah, so uh, Mystic probably, yeah, I, I, like, I wouldn't say that I strongly dislike Mystic or anything, but it is probably my least favorite class, now that you say. Interesting, yeah. Everyone, Mystic, Mystic and one. Survivor, I think, are, like, tied for my top. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. That's why, that's why you're so annoying to play with. All of great. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> for, for that one numeral page, is going to be huge. <gasps> There's an upgraded rod of Carnamagos. Oh my god. Do we both have copies? Yep. This no longer says limit one per deck. Yep. All right, what else does it say? Oh my god. It is the Scepter of the Mad Seer, which I guess the original one was too. Yeah. It's now 2 XP, still 2 cost, still 1 will icon. Item Relic, Occult and Cursed. As a fast action, choose a non-elite enemy at any location and exhaust the rod, reveal 5 random cast tokens. Uh, sounds very similar so far. For each chaos token, or for each curse token revealed, that's the difference. For each curse token yeah. revealed, you may search your bonded card search. for a rot enemy. Oh, and a search. Well, oh this is like God. way many this improvements. Is so much better. And yeah. it touches that enemy. This was already my. I think. I this think the, the original rod card. was probably my favorite card in Hell of the Cycle. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is. Uh, I actually <laughs> might. I think it's an incredible upgrade. I think yeah. it, I think that this is it becomes a really great card. Uh, I think that getting rid of the random yeah. the random uh, rocks <laughs> kind of takes away a little bit of the fun for me. Agreed. But, I agree, but it also ups the power significantly. I guess nothing is stopping me from choosing to randomize anyway. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is <laughs> Even stopping Even though the game you. allows me to search. <laughs> Absolutely uh, nothing. I, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly take the removal of the limit one option. I'll gladly take the each curse gives you one. And then I can just still randomize it if I want. <laughs> Why <Absolutely>. not? Absolutely. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. That's an upgrade. This is a huge upgrade. That's... See, this is how you do an exciting upgrade. Card. Yeah. This is... Yeah. This, these, th- this card... That's the card. I think, it's, I think it's the card of the cycle, guys. I think we found it. It's super fun, super exciting. I think really good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, love everything about it. Yeah. It's using, no the, it's, it's using the bonded mechanic in a really cool way, that which we've covered how much I love bonded. Uh, bondage, he says. Yes, yes. Just gotta get that bondage. Uh... That's how people talk about bondage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, gotta, rods gotta, are a good way get to get bondage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's our next card? Call of the Beyond is a zero-cost mystic event. It's level two. Uh, it's a ritual and cursed, and as an additional cost to play Call of the Beyond, add three curses to the chaos bag. Love it. Uh, choose an asset you control with uses charges or uses secrets. Replenish all of that asset's charges or secrets. Then you may resolve an action or fast ability on that asset without paying its action cost of any. Wait. So zero what? cost, three curses as an additional cost, but then you get to fully replenish an and asset use? and use it once. Whoa. That seems really good. It's amazing. Very good. This is amazing. I'm kind of surprised with all the doubles in this. I'm kind of surprised this isn't a double. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this seems really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. And it's 2xp. But it's zero cost. It's yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> this seems really, really good. Wow. Yeah, I will admit, this might be better than Speaks of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I mean, let's back up here. Yeah. Uh, speak, speak to the Dead. Can, can recall re- this. Can recall this. So you can oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> now we're dead. talking. Amazing. So actually, Speak to the Dead is now incredible. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. finally, yeah. finally yeah. there's a good event. Yeah, I mean, it is oh, yeah. called The Beyond, and this is yeah. Speak to the Dead. I mean, they oh, are yeah. naturally synergistic in their titles. Yeah. It's true. Do you think that, like, the next one's going to be, like, text the ghost? <laughs> DM the... <laughs> slide into the DMs. Yeah, and I mean, we've been... We've been DM the demons. DM the demons. <laughs> we've been seeing all these cards and largely considering adding curses to the bag to be a positive, so it's an additional cost. It does mean that, um, similar to, I think, Couch and Bargain and other cards that have that as a cost, you can't play it if the bag is already full of curses. Sure. Yeah. So it could limit you uh, at the moment you'd rather play it, but... But if you're oh. playing Goaku, then you're just like, I'm going to take an extra action this turn, and then there's less curses in the back. Yeah, and you can use that action to play Call of the Beyond. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Seems great. I think this, this card's incredible. This yeah. gr- It's wild how yeah. good this card is. All right. 
Ethereal form, level two. Oh boy. I'm gonna try to make uh, ethereal form work. Yeah. <laughs> Stop <laughs> trying to make ethereal form happen. <laughs> this has eight lines of text, so much that they have shrunk the font size. Oh. So uh, yeah. I, I've got plenty of time to sit my beer. Uh, <laughs> this is a will, agility, and wild. It's a spell. Evade. Add your uh, will to your skill value. If you succeed, disengage from each other enemy engage with you. For the remainder of the turn, you are ethereal. Enemies cannot engage or be engaged with you. You cannot attack or deal damage to enemies. If a symbol was revealed during this evasion attempt, return ethereal form to your hand at the end of your turn. Oh, you can be ethereal all the time. Nice. How much it costs? Two? Uh, mm -hmm. Cost two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you can, at the cost, at the low, low cost of two, <laughs> uh, two resources, a card, an action, and being lucky enough to reveal a symbol. And having to read a lot of text. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the notable difference is uh, the returning the card yeah. with uh -huh. this, the thing, and instead of evading, is it evading all? Yeah, uh, it disengages from them. Oh, yeah, but that, I think that's what that's the only yeah. that's the only notable difference. Then is just yeah. the ending. I mean, it's a big difference because it's like basically you could just decide I'm gonna ignore enemies for the rest of the game. It's got good. It's got a lot of cost. It's got good that. icons here. I think. It it, I think that the wild icon was probably added, so it could be two agility or two. Yep. Um, will. Will. Uh, I think this is fine. I probably won't get it into my decks. But I think maybe in solo, you know, just just like yeah. regular ethereal form. I don't think playing ethereal form more times is the problem with ethereal form. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think if they could bring this down to one cost, I'd play it. Sure, yeah. Because then you can really just be ethereal for the cost of your upkeep resource, and that feels very good. Uh, you mentioned this next card a minute ago. It was upgraded Read the Signs. Yes. Uh, two, and see, this is what I was telling you last time. It's like, there's just been a lot of upgraded yeah. older cards. And, I'm and, noticing it yeah. this time. Uh, read the Signs, level two. Uh, two costs still. It's a spell uh, and a mystic event. Investigate. Add your uh, willpower... Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. Add your will value to your skill value for this investigation. You may ignore any effect or keyword on your location, which would trigger during this investigation. If you succeed, discover one additional clue. Uh, if a symbol was revealed during this investigation, return read the signs to your hand at the end of your turn. Now we're talking. That's the card. So that has the same upside as Ethereal Form, but it's on a card that was good in the first place? It was good in the first place, yeah. yeah. You'd want to play it often in the first place. Yeah. Uh, is Spectral Razor the next one? Spectral Razor I didn't is even the next look. one. <laughs> and... Called it. It's exactly the same. Okay. It is Will, Fist, and Wild, and if a symbol was revealed during the attack, you return it to your hand. Wow. And it was also a pretty good card originally, so yeah, I, I think it's also it's good also in great. this version. Yeah, it's interesting with the, like, if a symbol was revealed, uh, it, so it does go well with Chaos Bag Manipulation and that, that kind of thing. Without it, a lot of games, it might be as if you didn't upgrade it, right? You just don't draw a symbol, and so sure, it's sure, like... Sure. But it, keep in mind, it doesn't just say Bless or Curse, so, yeah, so like, I think, you know, yeah, sure, and stuff symbol. like that. Sure. But, like, even a full Bless Curse bag is, like, 60% symbols, mm -hmm. uh, so it'll still whiff. Like, it's, the, the, we're, by imagining playing it turn after turn after turn, we're falling into that pitfall of, like, evaluating the best case scenario for a card. You have all of But, uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. I mean, uh, an auto-fail on these cards is still returning to the, the, the hand, which feels really good, because sometimes... That's true. That's a big tempo break in your in your uh, mystic. A, a little bit of an auto fail production. Uh, yeah, it does return your hand at the end of your turn, which yeah. is interesting because I don't think we've oh. really seen that kind of timing before. So you can't replay it if you fail. It's the um, it's the, the rogue same timing as rogue mm -hmm. exactly. Oh, do they? Hmm. Yeah. So like, there's an upgrade to the the trick suite of, yeah. of mm -hmm. rogues that were like cheap shot, um, pilfer, those types of. Oh, okay. Cards. I don't recall that aspect that it was at the end of your turn. Yeah, and it was ex if you succeed by a certain amount, you return to the. Then I mean, the hand. the reason for it's very clear because then even like, if it returned your hand as like a if you fail thing, that's one thing. But if you could just keep drawing blesses and plays three times in a row, that would be nuts. Oh so, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. The, at the end of the turn, it makes sense. The rogue ones were like maybe a little better, unless we're about to see a combo card, just because you could use Chuck Fergus to play them for free every turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, whereas I don't. No, there's no, like, commonly played Mystic cards that let you play these for free. There's, like, Trapezoid, maybe, could help. Oh, like an asset. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, Uncage the Soul is the one I was thinking of, but that's just one. with, like, Spectral, because you'll get hit. Sure. sure. Oh, yeah. Um, yep, yeah. yeah. That's true. But you can do it with Reef Signs. Yeah. Uh, now we've got a card that is not an upgrade. <gasps> if, I don't think. 
Ethereal Weaving. <laughs> this is a one-cost Mystic event that's level three. It's a spirit and double traded card, so it costs an additional action to play. Reveal up to three different spell events from your hand. One at a time, play each revealed event, reducing its cost by one. While resolving each of those events, you get plus two skill value. Ooh. Ever vigilant for spell events with a skill boost. Seems good. Seems great. The difference between this and Ever Vigilant is this takes twice as many actions. So it's three cards for two actions. It's not... But you get skill value. Yeah, you get nice. skill value yeah. and discount. And you recur them with Speaks of the Dead. We're almost done with this box, and I was truly expecting some sort of card that explains why they've decided to put 15 doubles in this box, and we sure haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's fine. Like, I, I don't mind double cards. It's just to have them so concentrated in one expansion, it is messing with my head to have there not be a reason for it. That's fair. Uh, the card seems fair, great, though. Kahaku has four actions, so he gets to play two doubles a turn. Yeah. Sure, yeah, that's how that works. Uh, next card is the Key of Solomon. Uh, two cost, four XP. Oh, it's Secrets of the Unknown. Four XP, four icons. Wow, what are those icons? Will, yeah. Book, and Double Wild. Cool. Item Tome, Blessed and Cursed. As a fast action, if there are more Blessed and Cursed in the bag, remove one Blessed token from the bag and exhaust the Key of Solomon. Heal up to two damage and or horror from an investigator or ally asset at your location. Also as a fast action, if there are more Curse than Bless, remove a Curse token from the Chaos Bag and Exhaust Key of Solomon to gain two resources. With just this and Kohaku himself, uh, you can either heal two damage or gain two resources every turn. <laughs> No yep. other Curse Plus cards needed. Yeah. Well, Kahaku, you might occasionally have a tie. Uh, not if you're using this every turn to remove the yeah, damage. Like it... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying, yeah, like, at the start of your turn, you add something and immediately trigger yeah. the key. Yeah. I think this seems excellent. Yeah. Uh, my one question is, is healing or resources... Something that you're actually spending four experience and uh, hand slot on. I think. I think yeah. both of them are kind of ancillary effect. Like neither of them like actually wins the game for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Carolyn can't take this, right? Um, she can. It it heals damage. Does heal damage, but not horror, right? It heals horror. Oh, okay. Then yeah, yeah. She can, she can I think. Take it. I think. Yeah, it's level four. Like I'm any, not sure what level any, she takes. I think pretty much anything. Okay. Heals. Yeah. So she probably so, yeah, could. She, she might want this. And so can, what's his name, um, Vincent? Vincent? Yeah, yeah, she would have trouble putting curses into the bag. She would need some help, but... Um, she can play she's level got zero and one mystic. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, she's, she's got ten feet. That's all you need. Uh, yeah, I think this card's cool. It's really cool. It, I mean, it, it's direct answers to all those different cards that we had that were like, pay an additional three curses into the bag, and then this is going to remove them and give you two resources for that. Yes. That seems amazing. Yeah. I just wish that this, as a high-level card, and it leans into the thing that, Kaku, I guess, is the only other thing that this has mattered, but it leans into... Uh, caring whether there's more blessing and curses, blesses or curses, which I've been saying there doesn't seem to be anything new that this box is doing with blesses and curses. That's kind of the one thing. Yeah. Um, so I just wish that this did more exciting things. Healing and gaining resources are both kind of some of the most mundane and boring yeah. actual effects of this. That said, it's an extremely efficient card that is a very good consideration if you're putting blesses and curses in the back. And can it heal allies at your location or just allies uh, that you control? Uh, at your allies location. Asset Investi your location. Investigators and allies at your location. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, you can keep, like, any of those allies that are pinging themselves, like Greta or Guard Dog, to I do think, their effect. I think Vincent can take this. Yeah, yeah I think Vincent right? needs hand slots more than Carolyn. Maybe so. I think this so. is, like, the, I think this is a okay Vincent card, but a great card. Yeah, but I wonder if he can get up to extra hijinks because it's a tome and everything, too. But maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. I think he can get, he can get uh, the card that allows him to have an additional hand slot for tomes. Sure, yeah. That's a yellow card. Hmm. Cool. But not as cool as I'd like. I, have I liked it. <laughs> uh, last Mystic card. Seal of the Elders, zero cost, five XP, will and fight. Spell, pact, blessed and cursed. Fast, play after a skill test at your location ends in which at least two curse or two blessed were revealed. Oh. Mm. 
Um, so I guess one and one would not trigger this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if two curse tokens were revealed, search your bonded cards for one copy of Servant of Grass and put it into play. If two blessed tokens were revealed, search your bonded cards for Keeper of the Key and put it into play. <laughs> if two curse tokens and two blessed tokens were revealed, do both instead. Remove Whoa. Seal of the Elders from the game. Hmm. Whoa. So you really do want two, two and two. Although, ideally... Does it only remove if you do two and two? Or does it no. Remove? Okay. No matter what. Yeah, I think it's going to be removed okay. no matter what. Uh, all right, Kyle, what do those cards do? <laughs> Let me tell you. The Servant of Brass, which is the one you get from Curse... A uh, demonic vassal is a summon traded card. Is it demonic like keyboard stuff? Yeah, it is <laughs> demonic. <laughs> um, it's a summon traded card bonded to the seal of the elders, and uh, as a reaction, when a curse token is revealed for, during a skill test at your location, deal one damage to the servant of the brass and two damage to an enemy at your location or connecting location. Whoa. Very powerful already, especially after all the healing of allies we've talked about. Yeah. Forced uh, when it would leave play instead of the side out of play. So this is a bomb card, that makes sense. Yep. yep. And then uh, Keeper of the Key, which is from the Blessed One. Uh, reaction when a Blessed Token is revealed during a skill test at your location. Deal one horror to the Keeper of Key and discover one clue at your location or a connecting location. Hmm. Wow. This plus that book we just learned about would be a ridiculous combination. Uh, I mean, I think this. I think this card is awesome. Uh, in what way does it co really care about Heal healing the allies? These are, oh, I see. Yeah. Oh wait, these are it's are they allies? Not, oh, they're not they're allies. allies. Oh, they're okay. summon. Uh, yeah. So these guys can't be healed very easily. I don't think. Um, you could uh, shuttle damage off of them using right. uh, <laughs> oh uh, solemn vow. Solemn Vow, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Unless Solemn Vow is only allies. I don't know. No, it's cards you control. Yeah. Well, this is awesome. We've been really underwhelmed by some level yeah. 5 cards in this box, but I'm, so, not, I'm not underwhelmed. No, I think, I think that this is super cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Love. love. Really cool little, like, and that art is just fantastic. Oh, yeah. They, they both have com guys. completely different art for these uh, de demonic vessels. Oh, they're not both demonic vessels. No, this is Celestial War. War. Right. Oh, it's an angel and a demon. Yeah. Clearly that's an angel, right? Uh, the, they're, they're supposed to be that horrifying? Yeah. They're <laughs> very scary <laughs> angels. But yeah, you know, you got your shoulders of yeah. uh, <laughs> celestial beings. <laughs> the, uh, there's going to be some agonizing moments of, like, two curses were just played. Do I play, or, or just yeah. not, do I play this, or do I push my luck and hope that soon we get a two-and-two two moment? I think you, you usually push your luck, because it feels great to get I, those two I think, very powerful I think summons you, I think you usually push your luck, yes, but I think you're usually wrong to do yeah. so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not, dis not disagreeing with that point. But yes. But you I mean, know, with Olive, you just get, like, four tokens, you, you see a yeah, couple... Yeah, but Brandon would yeah. have the unupgraded Olive, and he would only get three, and Ugh. it's totally bad. Oh mm. my god. It's the worst. It's true. I am the worst. Um, can this... Oh, yeah, because it's blessed and cursed. Yeah, I guess everything... There's nothing, like, that's too high level. Okay, there's no mystic cards here that Kohaku can't take. That was my question. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. No. Uh, I really, really like what we saw from Mystic. We do yeah. have yeah. one neutral card left, right? Uh, two, I two. think. I think I have one. You guys have one. Oh, okay. Well, then, uh, mine is Dawnstar. It is a one-cost level one neutral event with a wild icon... Ritual and Blessed, Fast, play after revealing Chaos Tokens during a skill test at your location. Ignore the modifiers of each Curse Token revealed during this test. For each Curse Token ignored, deal one damage to an enemy at your location. Whoa. What? Only the strongest spirit can sunder the dark. So, play it after revealing Chaos Tokens. Okay, yeah. so you can wait to see how many Curses you draw. Feels then play this to ignore those modifiers. That's funny too. After chaos token, so you do play. You can play this after a string of curses, and then it kind of like yeah. retroactively so, goes back and ignores all their modifiers. It's better so. than a yeah. curse in two different ways. <laughs> One is you play it after the fact. Yeah. So like a curse yep. is a chance that you play it and you don't draw any curses. Right. Mm -hmm. And second, you also do a bunch of damage. Like, yeah. That's so good. Yeah. There was um. There was one we looked at earlier. Was it a rogue card? So Steven wasn't with us. The yeah. event that you play that uh, like adds four wild icons to your test uh, when you draw a curse. Like this is kind of like that. Where yeah, it's, it's, it was a retroactive. Yeah. When you draw a curse, you can play it and add yeah. four wilds. Because it's responsive to a curse, that makes it great. Because there's no, it's not like a skill card that it's like, well, if you happen to draw a curse, uh, yeah, I think this is excellent. Ignore the modifiers, so you, you probably pass the test and deal damage for each. 
Uh, so it's, it's pretty flexible because you can play it because you want the damage and would pass the test anyway. You can play it to pass the test. Uh, it's probably pretty rare that actually both sides of that <laughs> are going to be super meaningful. That's but uh, very for, for, for one cost fast, like I don't and, and one XP, I don't need it to to do everything in the world. Nope. That's what like the others is for. Uh, cool. All right, last card. Last card. <clears throat> oh, that's right. That's uh, you said there was a neutral permanent. Neutral okay, permanent. Yeah. It's a cult reliquary, dubious source. Ooh. Uh, it's a three cost or three uh, experienced uh, permanent asset in neutral. You have one additional hand accessory or arcane slot, which can only be used to hold blessed or cursed assets. Huh. So Sorry, hand hand arcane or what? Accessory. Accessory. Yep. So wow, pretty pretty flexible and powerful, I think. And there's a lot, with a lot of these. Blessed I mean, like how, I feel like uh, maybe outside of Rogue, which had so much parlay and everything, I feel like most like two thirds of the other cards we looked at were blessed and cursed. <laughs> like a lot of these new cards can go in those I slots. Agree. Yeah. And you said it was three cost, so it's like a three, charisma or relic hunter yeah, just exactly. for for blessed and cursed. Uh, I think that's super cool. Seems really good. Yeah, I just wish it could also give you. Are there very many cursed? Is it like is is all my pride? Yeah, I was gonna say it does, <laughs> if it could give you an ally slot also. I think she's just a witch. She is just a witch. Yeah, maybe there are no cursed uh, cursed and blessed allies. I'm not sure. I think there was like the, the, the rogue one. Yeah, the um, priest of many fates. Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's probably. probably there's yeah. the other rogue one that is enter spite for free when you get like a blessing. Of curse. Oh yeah. yeah, when you get I think two or three tokens. Showing. Yeah, I can't remember what it is. So it's funny, these cards, these mystic cards almost exclusively mention curses, or sometimes, like the Key of Solomon, have a little bit of mentioning blesses. I was kind of like, I remember from interviews during Innsmouth and stuff, the, the like color pie for blesses and curses was uh, red and blue, bless, green and yellow, curse, and mystic was kind of supposed to be both, which you see on like Paradoxical Covenant and stuff. But mystic? And you see that in Kohaku, but all of these cards are just curse card after curse but, card after curse card. But that's actually how Innsmouth in was. Yeah, because all the high the, upside the, mystic stuff was like Armageddon. Yeah, the spell and, assets. Yeah. The like, spell assets were, yeah. Like Paradoxical was like the main that went in both, and nobody played that in Innsmouth, so... Right. I mean, I but think it's, it's like it had Tides of Fate or whatever Yeah, it had it an event but that like... But also no one really played No, no people actually played with a curse Well, just because they were not great doesn't mean that I wasn't hoping that there would be more along those lines. Uh, but that said, I think that these have the fun, the most fun cards we've seen. Yeah, this, yeah. this uh, was a good I'm, good note to end on. Yeah, I'm glad we yeah, went Mystic. I, I'm really excited about this. Um, any other thoughts on Mystic? And then I'm going to ask you uh, to give a decisive evaluation of the entire box. Oh uh... Mystic, obviously, best class. Yeah. Um, yeah. People, people of class and sophistication realize that. <laughs> um, I, I think, yeah, these are really strong. I think Kohaku works pretty well on their own. I think it'll also be really interesting to see how Kohaku works with other combinations of characters. Yeah, and one thing we didn't talk much about with Kohaku is that access to Blessed and Cursed cards, which means this is a small piece of yeah. what he can access. Yeah. He can access a lot of... Um, maybe not a lot of cards. Like, it might not actually be more cards than Rita can access. Like, I don't know how, how those compare in volume to, like, tactics or something, but um, everything that he will wish he could get, he, he can, can get. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so he's going to have a lot of deck building options. Yeah, and I think honestly, his his book, the ability to instead of drawing a token, grab a curse or a bless, whichever one there's more of. Yeah. With so much different tech in the cursed and bless, you know, access that he has, that could be something like grabbing a blessing to trigger a holy spear. Or it could be something like grabbing a curse that trigger an armor. Get it? Like there's yeah. so much space for what that actually opens up, like, you build these kind of curse Blessed decks with the cards, like, Favor of Sun and Favor of Moon in mind, and those are only three uses in the whole game, usually you can yeah. pull that off, so it's, like, his permanent, like, or not permanent, but his signature that doesn't have uses, can just continuously do that, is wild to me. I am all, as you, as you list off, like, all these neutral cards, like, obviously he wants Tempt Fate, and right, pluses and curses, and then favor and sun and moon. I'm I'm stressing it's about how to be, get this to thirty. It's gonna, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say cutting cutting is gonna be the most heart wrenching thing in it's this deck. Really it's hard, so hard to only put thirty cards. Oh in this my deck. goodness! Yeah. So in Innsmouth, mm -hmm. I feel like 
you really wanted to go with your team being Team Curse or Team Bless. Do you think that that is still true, or do you think that they have made the like combo party much more viable in this box? I mean, I think it's probably still true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Even though we saw some cool payoffs for both here, and there have been a couple before, I think that it mostly is still going to be beneficial to make sure that you like. I mean. I don't know, the curse stuff, like, especially what we just looked at, had a lot of, draw a handful of tokens out of the bag and count how many curses you drew, mm -hmm. which means blesses will just fuck with that. Uh, and then if you're playing with blesses, curses don't, oh no, there, there are like Voice of Ron, stuff in Smith, all does similar things for yeah. blesses, yep. so curses dilute it in the same way. What we saw no, for Voice of Ron, you liked both. Yeah, it's fine. Any oh, good oh, because that's a mystic. Yeah, but there are, aren't, aren't there some examples of you? There are some, yeah, there's a cancel where you want to find a bless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... They definitely, for those specific cards, still dilute each other. Um, I think, honestly, but, Kohaku uh, could play his own Curse and Bless game while someone else sits there on the sidelines holding the Yellow Covenant, like a little armor yeah. protection. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I draw a Curse, it's a plus one, but if I draw a Bless, it's a plus two. Okay, that's good enough. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just ignores the rest of Kawaku's craziness while, while they play a normal, straightforward investigator with a little bit of Curse mit mitigation yeah. built in. Yeah. Even though it's not optimal, I have always loved when we just go all plus and curse and just 20 of them constantly in the bag. Maximum yeah. chaos on yeah. every test. No, it's, super, could, it's so much fun as that. Like your test results could be anywhere from like minus 12 to plus 9. Like, <laughs> the games like, take 30 minutes yeah. longer because instead of one token, you draw like 6 on average out of the bag. true. It's true. And then do all the arithmetic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's still probably the... the the best choice when you're when you're playing expert difficulty, choose bless or optimal play. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when you're playing fun difficulties, uh, just just do it. Let's put it all in. There. And and I think that's actually my biggest comment on the mystic is not only do I think it's really interesting and somewhat powerful, I think it's really fun. Like mm -hmm. every car that I like, you know, liked in this pack was just like both fun and good. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm really glad we ended on a high note with Mystic, because I think overall I'm, I would describe myself as disappointed with the expansion. Like, I, I, I don't know, it's been so long since I've got content. <laughs> you all, yeah, I mean, it's been, what, 15 months since the last box, so, so it's nice to have something. <laughs> yeah. I but did. it was very safe. Even this, even though we liked a lot of the designs, is there anything here you can point at and be like, whoa, that's, a, that's new? No, I don't think you can. I think the rod. Uh, I think the rod yeah. feels most new. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I'd agree. That, uh, that, 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 that one card. Um, it's me. using bonded in a cool new way. I, I, I love the card. I'm not. I'm not. But uh, yeah, there's like the only kind of like new mechanic in the box is elusive, which is an enemy yeah. keyword, right? And uh, yeah, so I, I wish it wasn't so safe. So the the investigators, several of them are very weird. But to what end was not clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, to, in what way does it actually deliver like a cool new deck archetype or fun new playstyle? Just because it's weird, it doesn't mean it's um, an um, exciting innovation for the game. I, I, I know we've we've already talked about how much we love Rod, but I'm going to say one more thing about Rod because mm -hmm. it's so important to me in this game. So in this game, right, where like some random folks sometimes the mystics specifically get into this like weird cthulhu you know hp lovecraft mythos of casting spells and things mm -hmm. and what this delivers is unreal where it's yes. like i find this like rod yeah. of magic and i don't quite know how to wield yeah. it and you're like kind of like swinging it around making shit happen you yeah. don't quite understand and then as you get experienced you start honing that magic and can like cast a specific spell at this specific enemy and i'm like that is a home freaking run. That is a really cool way of looking at it. Yeah, uh, yeah the, the removal of the randomization, like the story that's telling is your gaining of expertise yeah. with it. Uh, that's super cool. Yeah. Which is yeah. brilliant. Every fantasy series starts with like the wizard, like just kind of like doing some stuff. Like I blacked out and yeah. then the bat, you know, like yeah. Harry Potter, like offends off Voldemort, but like doesn't know how they did it. Yeah. Like, they did it as like a baby, you know? Right, like, right. <laughs> and by the end, they can actually like do stuff on purpose. Exactly, you know? yeah. And, and I think so often we just like walk in, we're like, yes, I'm the spellcaster of this and I am perfectly mastered in all these spells that I have in my right, back. Whereas right. this is like, 
I don't know. I found this thing. I can make magic happen, but not really well. Yeah. Like yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Feel feel is is so good. Yeah. So I hope in the next cycle, which uh, you know, if it's fifteen months away, we'll be here in <laughs> summer twenty twenty five talking about it. But uh, I hope that it gets back to a customizable or even though I don't, even though I don't, even though I don't like multi class cards, like I that type of like. New Taking thing, new risks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, risky, right? Uh, so I hope we get back to that because this game is so long in the tooth that I think it needs it. Yeah, to stay fresh. Uh, but I, I, I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna so. say mini factions. Mini factions. Yeah. So that's a real page I've never. Heard. I don't. Do you do you consider that successful in Netrunner? Yeah, it's, like from a like, like design two, standpoint, it was, it was like two thirds successful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, for a while it was fun, and then everyone kind of got tired of them, and they put, what, in the final cycle, they put, like, one more card in yeah, for yeah, each or something. Great. It was great. <laughs> it was, it, it was, I enjoyed it. I played, like, all, all three of those factions, or all three of the mini factions a lot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yes, you know what? Sure. Yeah. Marvel Champions even just did it with uh, the Deadpool pack. It adds a fifth, oh. it adds a fifth, oh, yeah. a fifth faction. A pool faction. Mm, yeah. Because they broke the fourth faction? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I, I wonder if any of the marketing materials was back so they actually said like that's pretty good. I don't, yeah, know. That is, I don't know if they that came up with that. That's a great quip. <laughs> <Break the word. laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to see this game uh, keep innovating, but even though it's not innovating, uh, it's a good smattering of cards I'm, I'm happy to see here. Yeah. No, I, th- I think in general, safe, but I'm, I'm excited to try all the new content. Uh, I feel like I can grok this content very easily from first glance and I'll be like oh when I'm building a deck oh yeah I remember that card and yeah. kind of what it does instead right. of like when I <laughs> left Scarlet Keys I felt like wait I read this card yeah I point. know <laughs> I see a card on Arkham DB and I'm like that exists <laughs> <laughs> like I'm on video reviewing it and I have never seen this in my life <laughs> that's how I felt after Scarlet Key review <laughs> Uh, okay, I guess uh, we'll we'll wind this down. Yeah, any yeah. unless there's any any other thoughts. No, excited to play some Arkham. Yeah, yeah. Get back to it. You have to play a campaign for the first time in t- two years. I played. I started two other campaigns lately, but yeah, I, did, I, 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 I did. I did. No. Two years. <laughs> Not two, okay, in the last two years, yes. In the last one year, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I've not, not been as hot and heavy on Arkham uh, lately, but... Uh, yeah. Time to get, I'll get back, I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for watching this video, for watching all of them. Uh, whatever you watch, we appreciate it. We appreciate your comments, your pressing the algorithm buttons, <laughs> all that stuff you can do that uh, helps us grow the channel. And uh, we'll be back with all sorts of games. Uh, this is not an Arkham exclusive channel. We also do playthroughs and sometimes card talk uh, about other games too. So make sure to subscribe, check us out. And uh, yeah, we'll do more of these, I guess, in 2025. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, there's Arkham content. <laughs> Till then, be optimal.